This is Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? Otacon, I'm about to play this old video game I found in the storage. It looks familiar. Oh? Which one is that? Metal Gear Solid 2. Sons of Liberty. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Seriously, Snake? You're about to play a game where you're the main character. You're gonna have a meta experience. <laughs> it's been 20 years since I last played it. Figured it'd be a nice trip down memory lane. I can't wait to hear your commentary on the plot twist. This makes sure you remember how to play it. How hard can it be? I've lived it, right? That's true. But the real-life ride never did those cartwheel flips. And the guards never had exclamation points appear over their heads. I always thought that was a missed opportunity in real life. <laughs> Just remember, if you get stuck, call me on the codec. Yeah, yeah. Wait. The controls are way different than I remember. Why is the camera angle so fixed? Welcome to the early 2000s, my friend. Just be thankful you're not playing it on a tube TV. This is gonna take some getting used to. Maybe you should have started with the VR missions. Nah, I live for the challenge. Besides, the only VR I remember is fighting off genome soldiers. Just keep at it, old man. And remember, if you encounter a guy named Erikoi Pliskin, he might look oddly familiar. Very funny, Otacon. All right, here I go. Time to sneak past these guards. Or maybe just use this cardboard box. Classic snake. Have fun. And watch out for those pesky security cameras. Roger that. Oh, and Otacon, no spoilers, okay? Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. Happy gaming, snake. Snake out. Solid Snake has come too. Otacon, I just found this old piece of tech in my storage. It says PlayStation 2 on it. Ah, uh, the PlayStation 2. Man, that takes me back. That was revolutionary when it first came out. Did you know it was more than just a gaming console? Um, uh, I just remember playing NGS 2 on it. What else was it good for? Well, besides being a gaming console, it was also one of the first affordable DVD players. At the time, DVD players were quite expensive. Many people bought the PS2 just for its, uh, you know, multimedia capabilities. So, people bought a gaming console to watch movies? Exactly. It helped DVDs become mainstream. Plus, the PlayStation 2 had backwards compatibility with PS1 games. It was a big deal back in the day. Backwards compatibility, huh? Sounds like a feature that every gaming console should have. <laughs> you think so, right? It's always a selling point. The PS2 was also known for its vast game library. Some of the best games in history were on that platform. Like MGS2? <laughs> Definitely, but also many other classics. Final Fantasy, Silent Hill, God of War, the list goes on. I can't believe how small the memory cards are. Just eight megabytes. My tactical shades have more storage than that. Yeah, data storage has come a long way, but back then, eight megabytes was sufficient. Just make sure you don't lose that card. You might have to start in just two all over again. I'll keep that in mind. All right. I'm going to boot this up. Any tips? Make sure the disc is clean. Sometimes old games can be finicky. And enjoy the nostalgia trip. Thanks, Otacon. Time to relive the glory days. Have fun, Snake. And remember, if you see a game over screen, it's just a game this time. <laughs> I'll try to keep that in mind. I've got to say, this music in NGS2 is something else. Ah, uh, you noticed that too? The game score is legendary. Harry Gregson Williams did a fantastic job with the soundtrack. It really elevates the whole experience. It's more than that. It's like... 
every time I'm sneaking around, the music gives me the sense of tension. And during combat, it gets my blood pumping. That's the power of a good score, Snake. It enhances the emotions of each scene and makes the player feel more connected to the action. There's this one trick, main theme. Every time it plays, it gives me the chills. It makes me feel like a hero, even if it's just a game. It's iconic. I've caught myself humming that tune while working on some of my gadgets. It's hard not to get inspired. You and your gadgets. At least you have good taste in music. Thanks, Snake. But you're right. Music is a vital part of any game. I might just keep playing just to hear the music. It helps set the tone and can even be a character of its own. And in GS2, it adds depth to the story and the characters. I never thought I'd be this into a game's soundtrack. Well... The Hudson River, two years ago. We had classified intelligence that a new type of Metal Gear was scheduled for transport. The whole thing stank, but our noses have been out in the cold too long. If you ever get tired of sneaking around in the game, you can always just listen to the original soundtrack. I have a copy on CD if you want. CD? Talk about old school. Uh, look, hey, there's nothing wrong with appreciating the classics. Plus, it has a certain tangible charm. I'll take your word for it. For now, I'm diving back in. I've got a mission to complete and a killer soundtrack to accompany me. Enjoy the ride, Snake. And don't forget to keep an ear out for Can't Say Goodbye to Yesterday during the credits. Eh, I'll be listening. Wow. That opening scene on the bridge, that's something you don't forget. Oh, man. The George Washington Bridge Jump? It's one of the most iconic scenes in game in history. Even I got chills the first time I saw it, and I knew it was coming. It's just a cutscene, Otacon, but I'll admit, the rain, the lighting, it's almost poetic. And the way you, I mean, the digital you, emerges from the water with a stealth camo disengaging? Pure cinematic brilliance. And let's not forget the orchestral soundtrack that accompanies it. Makes you feel like you're in an epic movie. You're gushing, Otacon. Can you blame me? It's like watching a Hollywood blockbuster. But think about it, Snake. That scene is a metaphor for the entire game. It introduces the blend of stealth, drama, and action players are about to experience. All from a bridge jump? Absolutely. Plus, it was a fantastic showcase of the PlayStation 2's capabilities at the time. The rain physics, your character model, it was groundbreaking. You might be onto something. I'll admit, it sets the tone for the game pretty well. But honestly, it's a little surreal watching a digital version on myself do all that. <laughs> you mean you've never actually jumped off a bridge in the rain, flipped in the air, and landed perfectly on a moving ship? Not in my weekend plans, no. Well, in the digital world, Anything's possible, and it gives a player a taste of the legendary Solid Snake's oh, capabilities. Yeah, yeah. Legendary or not, I'm still trying to figure out these controls. Digital me might be agile, but real me, not so much. Don't worry, Snake. Practice makes perfect. And hey, if you ever decide to jump off a bridge for real, just give me a heads up, okay? <laughs> Will do, Otacon. For now, I'll stick to the virtual stunts.
This is Snake. Do you read me, Otacon? Loud and clear, Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? I'm at the sneak point. Everything going okay? The stealth camo's busted. Landing impact. We must have overused it. Sorry, but you're gonna have to deal with it. You're not in the military anymore. Right. I didn't plan on relying on this gadget anyway. The private sector's not so bad, is it? Privacy guaranteed? I'm happy as long as no one gives me any more unwanted gifts. You mean that thing with Naomi? And I can't say I miss the chattering nanny. Mei Ling's not so bad. That reminds me, I have to get in touch with her again about that new Natick flashware. Diverting toys from the SSCEN again? But give her a message from me. Someone will find out, sooner or later. She's better off assuming it's sooner and quit while she's safe. Too true. Okay, Snake, let's get to work. You know how the technical specs of Metal Gear were sold on the black market after Shadow Moses? All Ocelot's doing. Exactly. And now every state, group, and dot-com has its own version of Metal Gear. Not exactly a classified weapon for today's nuclear powers. This new one seems to have been designed to wipe the floor with all the other models. The only consistent description is that it's an amphibious, anti-Metal Gear vehicle. That explains why this one is under Marine Corps jurisdiction. The mission objective is to make visual confirmation of the new Metal Gear being transported by that tanker and bring back photographic evidence. But I want you first to go up to the top level of the infrastructure, to the bridge. We need to find out where the tanker is headed. A little reconnaissance, huh? There's too much we don't know about this new prototype. Capabilities, deployment method, we don't even know how close it is to completion. If we know where the testing arena is, I can start to draw some reasonable conclusions. All right, I'll head to the bridge ASAP. Try to avoid confrontations. Our goal is to collect evidence on Metal Gear development and expose it to the world. It would be best if you could get out of there without alerting anyone. Don't worry, I know the drill. We're not terrorists. Very good. Don't you forget that you're part of philanthropy now, an anti-Metal Gear organization and officially recognized by the UN. Recognized, but still fringe, Otacon. All right. Let's look at your gear. Your weapon is a tranquilizer gun converted from a Beretta M92F. M9? It's a little hard to work with because you have to reload after each shot since the slide locks. Better than scavenging at the mission site. Good suppressor, too. The chemical stun will take effect in a few seconds and last for hours. You can take down an elephant with that thing. Check out the laser sighting, too. The effects of the anesthetic round will vary depending on what part of the body is hit. We're talking about a difference of tens of seconds between hitting limbs, chest, or head. As for the equipment... Hey, Snake? Cigarettes? What's wrong with you? It's kind of a lucky charm. You haven't read the Surgeon General's warning, have you? Here's the digital camera. Works almost the same way as your old one. They don't look armed. Hey, Earth to Snake. These are nice, upstanding Marines, not terrorists. Don't get caught. You're in stealth mode here. Sure, and if it comes to that, a little beauty sleep never hurt anyone. By the way, Otacon, are you sure of this intelligence? Absolutely. Hacked it out of the Pentagon's classified files myself. No traces? Oh, please. I'm too good for that. But this might be a trap. Remember, there's a price on our heads. You're just being paranoid. I hope so. Those men, you wouldn't think they were anything but civilians from here. With all the ships passing on the river and in the harbor, putting uniformed marines on the deck would be a bad idea. People can get a clear view of the water from Riverside, too. The water line is too high. According to the navigational plans, this ship should have discharged its cargo upriver. It's in there, no doubt about it. The military trains you to watch for threats from the stern on a boat. That's SOP for counter-terror ops, too. Security should be tighter. You worry too much. Where's the target? Satellite surveillance is a major international pastime these days. I'd say the cargo holds, safely below the deck. Do you see the entrance to the holds? Looks like there are a few entryways into the crew quarters. The chopper. Otacon. Will I ever actually get to play the game? <laughs> oh, Snake. Welcome to the Metal Gear Solid experience. The series has always been known for its intricate storytelling, sometimes at the expense of gameplay. But 
I thought this was a game, not a movie. It's both, in a way. Looks like Hideo Kojima, the game's the director, always envisioned the Metal Gear series as a fusion of cinematic storytelling and interactive gameplay. Think of it as an interactive movie where you get to play the star. I get that, but sometimes I just want to sneak around and take down guards, not watch a 20-minute dialogue about the philosophy of war. Well, those deep, philosophical dialogues are part of the charm. They delve into themes of identity, mimetics, and the nature of warfare. It's what sets MGS apart from other action games. Don't get me wrong, Otacon. The story is gripping, but sometimes I just want to, you know, no Marine play. Touch that head of hair. <laughs> Patience, Snake. The gameplay sections are well worth the wait. And once you're in control, you'll appreciate the depth and complexity of the mechanics. Let's get an idea. Besides, it on. makes the story moments all that more impactful. I suppose you're right. I just wasn't expecting this much exposition. It's not about the destination, but the journey. Looks like the Enjoy the story. Now. Immerse yourself in the world. And when it's time to take action, show them what the legendary Solid Snake can do. All right, all right, I'll stick with it. We need to get a fix on who they are. Judging by their transport, aren't they some kind of military commandos? Not necessarily. It could be the KA-62, the civil model. Look, Snake, all we need is the photographic evidence of Metal Gear. As long as we have those, we can put it online and blow the whole thing wide open. So no pyrotechnics, okay? All right, I'll do my best. This isn't like Shadow Moses. Reach me if anything happens. The frequency's 141.12. How can I check in and save my progress? I'll do it. There's a frequency set aside for it. 140.96. Sorry, but no Mei Ling this time. Call me on the codec when you want to save. Got it. I'll be waiting just past the Verrazano Bridge. You need to be off that ship by then. I'll be in touch. Snake. Are you smoking? You really should quit. First of all, it turns you into an instant target in the dark. As for what it means to your health, I won't even go there. Remember what Naomi said about lung cancer rates? Everyone knows that it's a dangerous substance. So's war, and I've done that all my life. Well, you can screw up your own body if you like, but think about other people, okay? This is the new kind that has almost no secondhand smoke. It won't bother anyone. Oh, really? Didn't I see you toss the butt off the bridge? Littering, polluting. You have a long way to go, my friend. Tranquilizer gun, huh? Ah, uh, you noticed. This is the first entry in the series that actually allows players to complete the entire game without killing anyone. Really? But what about the previous missions? Haven't I always been a one-man army? Well, in previous games, you had limited non-lethal options. But in NGS2, thanks to advances in virtual equipment, Go you've got the tranquilizer gun. So, Push the if you're up for a challenge, door, you can go for a no-kill run. No-kill run? No kill run. Faster, uh, sounds boring. It's not about sure being boring, Snake. Open. It's about choice and ethics in combat. Some players like the added challenge of sneaking through without taking a life. Plus, it adds another layer of depth to your character. You're not just a mindless killer, you're a tactical espionage agent. So, you're saying I can save more virtual lives by putting them to sleep instead of permanently? Exactly. And if you manage to complete the game without killing anyone, there might be some special rewards in store for you. Rewards, huh? I guess I can give it a shot, but no promises. If someone gets in my way, old habits die hard. <laughs> Just remember, it's all about choices, Snake. The game's given you the freedom to approach missions how you see fit. Embrace it. All right, I'll give it a try. But if I end up surrounded because a guard woke up at the wrong time, 
I'm blaming you. Fair enough. Just remember to aim for the head with a trank gun. They'll be out like a light for a longer period. And keep an eye on their patrol patterns. Timing is everything. Got it. Time to show these guards some mercy by giving them a nap. That's the spirit, Snake. Otacon, I've got to admit, this Trink laser gun is a blast. I might not even switch back to live ammo. You've enjoyed the M9 Trink laser gun, huh? I know you'd come around. It has a whole new dimension to the gameplay. I mean, putting guards to sleep and watching them snore? Priceless. But it's a change for what I'm used to. MGS2 was groundbreaking in many ways, Snake. It introduced Freeze. so many new gameplay elements that pushed the boundaries Freeze. of what was possible in video games at the time. The tranquilizer gun was just one of them. And his guards, they react to so much. You can shoot a fire extinguisher, you can make a smoke screen, you can shoot a guard's radio, and you can't call for backup. It's so detailed. Exactly. The game's environment is highly interactive. Remember the ice cubes in the tanker? Oh, yeah. They actually melted over time. I spent 10 minutes just watching them. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, Snake. Kojima and his team paid attention to the smallest details. Everything from the way magazines can be used to distract guards, to shooting fruit in the pantry and seeing it react. It was all about immersion. Immersion's one thing, but at times, I feel like a kid in a candy store. So much to try, so little time. That's the intention. Players can replay the game multiple times and still discover new things. It's a testament to the depth and creativity infused into the game. I gotta hand it to you, Otacon. This video game thing is growing on me, especially with these new toys. Glad to hear it, Snake. Just remember, while the tranquilizer gun is fun, it's also a tool. Use it wisely, and you might just become the ultimate non-lethal soldier. No promises there, but for now, I'll think I'll stick to giving guards a little nap time. <laughs> Snake, what exactly are you doing? What? Uh, I'm just, uh, appreciating the environment, exploring, you know. By knocking on pennant model posters? Really? Hey, I heard these posters have, you know, Easter eggs. I just wanted to check. <laughs> oh, they do. I didn't think you'd be so invested in discovering them. If you knock on certain areas, they make funny noises. And if you're not careful, you might even alert nearby guards with your, you know, enthusiasm. Well, a soldier's got to entertain himself somehow in the field, right? And these posters, they're pretty detailed. <laughs> only you, Snake. Only you. But, yeah, the team really went the extra mile with the small details Snake, in this game. Get yourself out of From melting now. ice to, well, interactive away. posters. It's, it's all about These creating a living, breathing them. environment. They're searching for you. And they know you don't want to be found. You can't make some feeble attempt at concealment. Make sure you're completely hidden in some place they wouldn't think of searching. It's just, uh, unexpected, you know? I didn't think slapping a poster would make a sound. Remember, Snake, it's just a game. And games are meant to be fun. Even in the midst of a tactical espionage mission, there's room for some light-hearted moments. Well, that's certainly got a chuckle out of me. But maybe I should stick to more traditional methods of sneaking around. That might be wise, but I guess if you were needed a break, yeah, I guess you'd always uh, go back to those posters for a good laugh. Yeah. Uh, 
Maybe, just maybe, one or two more poster interactions. These guards, they're different, sharper. They're not the same dimwits from Shadow Moses. <laughs> yeah, you noticed the enemy AI in NGS2 has uh, undergone significant improvements. They're much more alert, can communicate with each other, and they spot something suspicious. They'll even call for backup. Something tells me I won't be able to do the old uh, hide in a corner trick. If one of them caught me, they're uh, probably checking her tables and inside lockers now. That's right. If a guard notices a locker door is ajar, he might open it to investigate. And they'll patrol in pairs. So if you take one down, his buddy might notice he's missing. The team really wanted to create a more challenging and dynamic experience for players. Bad. Challenging is one word for it. I remember the days when a cardboard box was all I needed to fool them. Ah, uh, yeah, the cardboard box still has its uses, though, Snake. We'll need to be more strategic about it. The game encourages players to observe, adapt, and think on their feet. It's not just about sneaking around anymore, it's about outsmarting your enemies. I've also noticed that if I leave a guard unconscious in the open, someone might wake him up. Precisely. You need to hide bodies to ensure they don't raise the alarm. It adds another layer of strategy to the gameplay. I guess I'll have to up my game. These next-gen guards aren't playing around. Embrace the challenge. Remember, you're not just any soldier. You're Solid Snake. Adapt, improvise, and show them what you're made of. Ah, yeah. Thanks for the pep talk. Uh, time to get tactical and maybe just maybe find a smarter way to use that cardboard box. I just shot a bottle and it shattered. Since when can I do that? The team wanted to add more interactivity. It's impressive. I mean, back in the day, shooting a bottle just meant it got a bullet hole. Now it's like, realistic. It makes me want to shoot everything and see what happens. Well, it's all about immersion, Snake, but remember, a gunfire can alert guards, so maybe don't go on a shooting spree. Uh, eh, maybe too late. I might have shot a few melons, some glasses, and maybe a fire extinguisher. That can create a temporary smoke screen useful for evading guards or causing distractions. It's a nice touch. Makes the environment feel more alive, responsive. That's the goal. The team really wanted to, you know, have the players experiment to see the outcomes of their actions. Whether it's shooting fruit, creating puddles by shooting water or containers, or breaking mirrors, oh. every little detail counts. It's a whole new level of tactical espionage action. But I've got to ask, what happens if I shoot a guard's radio? Remember, if you uh, manage to hit it, the guard won't be able to call for backup. But again, it's risky. If you miss, you might just alert them. Uh, uh, well, worth the risk, I'd say. I am to test out all these new gameplay mechanics. There's so much to do. While it's fun to experiment, your main goal is to stay, you know, stealthy. Don't get too carried away with the destructibles. Eh, I'll try to keep the property damage to the other one. Hey, Otacon, you ever drag a guard's body into a locker, you know, just for fun? <laughs> uh, Snake, isn't that a bit morbid? You're supposed to be on a mission. Uh, I am, but, you know, the physics in this game are so impressive. I mean, I mean, the way bodies flop around, it's oddly satisfying. It's like playing with action figures. Only you would find joy in something so bizarre, Snake. The feature was added for more tactical gameplay, not for whatever you're doing. Tactical fun, Otacon. Yeah. Besides, these guards are so persistent. It's a little payback. Ah, uh, just be careful. 
The feature was added so players could hide unconscious or incapacitated enemies, not parade them around. Yeah, I got it. But just between us, I made a pile of them in the break room. Looks like they're all taking a nap together. Poof, bop, I'll sneak. Always finding new ways to entertain yourself in the field. Well, when the world's constantly at stake, you gotta find some humor somewhere, right? True, but isn't the real fun just, you know, completing the mission? Don't get too sidetracked. But if you ever get the chance, try it. It's weirdly therapeutic. Playing this game really brings back memories. It's been, what, 20 years or more since it was first released. Has it really been that long? Well, I'm flies, man. I remember the hype leading up to it. Everyone was excited. Back then, it was truly groundbreaking. Yeah, I recall those days. The graphics, the AI, the story twist. They blew everyone's minds. And, of course, the internet was buzzing with all those fan theories. <laughs> Don't remind me. There were so many speculations and predictions. Some were close, while others were way off. It was a different time. Before every minor game detail got leaked online, there was genuine surprise. Absolutely. And remember the gaming magazines? They used to tease so much about the game's features and storyline. I remember waiting anxiously for the next issue to drop, hoping for just a tiny bit of more information. And those graphics. At the time, they feel like we were peering into the future. I mean, raindrops on the screen, individual ice cubes and glasses. Speaking of which, how about that E3 trailer? The anticipation of Bill was unmatched. That trailer was epic. Everyone was talking about it. Heck, even I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> you always were one, Snake. But, yeah, MGS2 set a new standard for gaming. It pushed the boundaries of what was possible, both in terms of gameplay and narrative. It's amazing to look back and see how far we've come, not just in gaming, but in the world. But playing this now, it's a nostalgic trip down memory lane. <laughs> Did you find out where that ship is headed? No, I'm looking at it. 35 degrees longitude, latitude around 58. More than 500 miles off the coast of the Bermudas, out in the middle of the Atlantic. So the prototype is ready for solo testing. It's basically combat worthy. That area is outside the Second Fleet's operational range too. It must be a standalone Marine Corps project. 
which means this prototype Metal Gear must be designed for independent deployment without any naval assistance. Anyway, analysis can wait till later. Snake, you need to go down to the holds and locate the actual metal... <laughs> Control room, communications and engine room are under control. All entry and exit points to the tanker hold secured. Infrared sensors placed and operational. Good work. Are the explosives in place? Yes, they are all planted. Listen, once we have what we came for, the tanker will be scuttled. And the vehicle's pilot? He's the only one who underwent the VR training. No one else can do it. Are you sure you can trust him? Your part in the mission is complete. You are to leave at once. No, it's not over yet. I can see the moon, even in this storm, pale as death. I have a bad feeling about this mission. You swore this to me, that you would leave the unit once the mission was complete. Do not worry, this is a country of liberty. No, this is where I belong, with the unit. I have nowhere else to go. Father, I want to stay and fight. There is no choice to make here, Olga. Need I remind you that you are carrying my grandchild? You will be on the helicopter out of here now! Damn it! Freeze! Hands over your head! Now! Toss your gun overboard, slowly. A woman. Show your face. You men, you're all the same. Who are you? We are nomads. Wanderers. Set to move. Americans. So you shoot women too? I'm a nomad too. What else do you have there? Take the knife and toss it. Not there. Toss it overboard. Hold that position. Now, turn around. You know what you're doing. It stopped me. Not too shabby, is it? New York, I mean. And that brings our tour to its conclusion. Scout knife with a surprise. You a Spetsnaz? I think you deserve a little credit. No one's ever dodged that shot of mine. But no one gets lucky twice either. unit since I was born. I grew up on the battlefield. Conflict and victory were my parents. The unit is my life, my family. We've shared everything, all the bad and all the good. I have no one, nothing except the unit. Nothing else matters to me. Ah. This Olga battle, Otacon, it's tougher than I remember. Snake, I'm monitoring your gameplay. You're literally standing in one spot and shooting. You're not even trying to dodge or move. Well, maybe I thought she'd appreciate an easy target. Come on, Snake. 
This isn't a shooting gallery. Olga's a trained mercenary. You can't just stand there and expect to win. I've been through a lot, Otacon. Thought I could give my legs a rest. But come on. I've seen you roll, crawl, and sneak around guards for hours. But now you're getting lazy in a boss battle? Look, Otacon, every time I replay this game, I like to try a different strategy. This time, I call it the Lazy Snake Approach. Lazy Snake? That's an oxymoron. Look, I get it. You're testing the game's mechanics. But at this rate, you're gonna get a game over. It's all part of the plan. Let Olga think she's got the upper hand, and then bam, surprise attack. By surprise attack, you mean actually moving for once? Uh, maybe. The ship appears to be under their control. The men have Russian gear, but I haven't been able to find out anything else about their origin. I know who they are. You do? We've ID'd the old man. Who is he? Sergei Gerlukovich. Gerlukovich? One of Ocelot's allies? Yeah, the Gru Colonel. He's the one Ocelot was supposed to meet up with after Shadow Moses. They're after Metal Gear. Everything's changed. This is not going to be as simple as we thought. You could say that. I saw a surveillance remote just now. It looked like the Cypher. A Marine Cypher T? No, Army. First the Marines, then the Russians, now the Army? You're right. This isn't gonna be simple. Snake, there's something I have to tell you. What? We didn't dig up this info about the new Metal Gear on our own. Not like usual. How did you find out then? It was a tip. An anonymous tip. Anonymous? You've never trusted those. Why would you start now? I, uh... I have a younger sister. A stepsister. We have different parents. I only knew her for two years. You've never mentioned her before. So? The sender of the tip was E.E. E.E.? -E? E -E? Her name is Emma, but I always call her E.E. -E. Emma? Emmerich? Yeah. It just caught my eye, you know? I figured it was a coincidence, but I couldn't get it out of my mind. There's really no one out there who knows about her. When was the last time you saw her? Over ten years ago. You think it's a trap to lure us out here? I don't know. After I got the tip, I did break into the Pentagon system to get confirmation. Okay. Watch your back, Snake. Maybe I screwed up. I've got a light-equipped USP. I can take them on now. There's no ammo, but it takes a 9mm, just like the Marine's M9. I'll find those somewhere around here. Don't raise too much racket with that thing. I hear you. So, Otacon, E.E., -E. seriously? Uh, you mean my sister Emma? Yeah, she's an essential character in the game. Why? E.E., -E. I mean, didn't you have any other nicknames for her? Something less electronic? Uh, it's a term of endearment, Snake. She's my little sister. And it's kind of, you know, a play on her name. It's just, every time I hear E, 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 I think you're about to give me a tutorial on electrical engineering. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be wrong. She's brilliant. Actually, a lot more skilled in some areas than I am. No offense, but you guys have some weird nicknames. I mean, Otacon and E, E. You sound like models of the latest robotic vacuums. Hey. Otacon is a homage to the Otaku Convention. It has significant personal meaning for me, just as E.E. E. does with Emma. All right, I'm just poking some fun. Though, I gotta admit, 
I did check if there's a vacuum called Otacon at one point. Really, Snake? Well, if there is one, I expect royalties. I'll make sure they ship one to your lab. The Otacon Special Edition. Sucks up spills like tears and watching anime. Very funny, Snake. Without my tech advice, you'd look lost in this game. Otacon, I'm stuck at this part. I can't figure out what to do next. Well, Snake, have you considered looking at the manual? You know, the physical one that came with the game? Manual? You mean the thin booklet thing? I thought it was just filled with artwork and warnings about not sitting too close to the TV. Actually, I just went through it, and I guess it's got some useful gameplay tips. Oh, and check this out. There's a technical support hotline number. Hotline? Why, a Kodak call? Kind of. You'd be calling actual people who can assist with game-related issues. Want to try it? You're suggesting I call tech support for a video game? Why not? It could be fun. Plus, uh, who knows? Maybe they've got some pro tips for you. I can imagine it now. Hello, technical support. This is Solid Snake. How do I beat the next boss? <laughs> Come on. What if they think I'm a prank caller? Tell them you're the other snake, the one who's more used to sneaking than dialing. All right, just this once. But if they start recommending that I turn the game off and on again, I'm, I'm hanging up. If all else fails, just remember the basics of CQC. Otacon, that's not until the next game. Oh, right. Well, I tried. All right. Dialing it is. Let's see how this goes. This is Snake. I need some assistance. Hello, Snake. This is Hal from Gun and the Technical Support. How can I assist you today? I'm playing Metal Gear Solid 2, and I'm on the tanker mission. I've got this USP handgun, but I can't figure out where to go next. Ah, Metal Gear Solid 2. Wonderful game. Please wait a moment. Do we support this game? Okay, Snake, let's see. Have you tried unplugging the controller and plugging it back in? What? No. Why would I do that? I need to know where to go next in the game. Ah, yes, of course. Please wait a moment. Okay, here it is. If player is stuck, recommend they look for the closest door or window. Have you tried opening all the doors or windows? It's not that simple. Really? There are some syntax explosives blocking my path with laser trip wires. I believe I had to shoot something, but I'm not sure where. Semtex says that in the manual. Ah, uh, yes, explosives. Maybe you can jump over them. <laughs> no, I can't. I think I need to shoot the control units or something. Ah. Did you know your game supports vibration feedback when you shoot? Maybe try that for a more immersive experience. But I'm not calling about vibration feedback. I need to know where to shoot to disarm the explosives. All it says, try to interact with the game environment for possible solutions. Have you tried shooting everything? But you're reading from a general troubleshooting guide, aren't you? I admit I haven't played this specific game before. I'm sorry, Snake. Ugh. It's all right. I'll figure it out. How does this hotline number still exist after 20 years? Yes, it is a bit surprising, isn't it? We've had this number for decades, and we just never took it down. Like, have, have a box of old wires and cables and never throw them away, thinking you might need them someday. You're saying this hotline is like an old box of cables. Precisely, plus, every once in a while, someone like you calls and it brings back a soldier. Not that I've played the game, mind you. Figures. Anyway, don't you think it's time to update things a bit? We could try, but you know how things can be. Lots of paperwork, and then someone says, if it isn't broken, why fix it? And here we are, 20 years later, assisting players on their PlayStation 2 adventures. Unbelievable. You guys really need to move on with the times. 
You're right, but then again, isn't it comforting to know that some things remain the same? Like your band in and our support line. I guess there's a certain charm to it. Just make sure you're not given advice from a 20-year-old manual. Oh, don't worry, I have the latest. Play station to troubleshooting got right here. Everything you need from memory card is used to control the vibrations. Uh, I think I'll manage on my own. But thanks for the chat. Anytime, Snake. If you ever feel nostalgic or need tips on blowing into cartridge slots, give us a ring. Oh. Otacon, you wouldn't believe who I just got off the line with. Who? Colonel Campbell? Maylene? Some new secret operative? Even better. Konami technical support. <laughs> Wait, Prepare what? The Wait, They're the still around? On the port side Surprisingly, the yes. We'll and just as ineffective as ever. Small room I got stuck side. at a part of the tanker mission and thought they could help. Oh, Snake. Did they tell you to unplug your controller and plug it back in? Among other things, it was like talking to someone who's never heard of Shadow Moses. He was flipping through some manual and kept giving some generic game advice. Have you tried opening all the doors or windows? I mean, seriously? <laughs> Reminds me of that time I had to explain to you how to use the Kodak. Hey, that was different. This is a game within a game. It's confusing. I get it, Snake. Sometimes you just need the old school touch, like calling someone to ask for the next ammo stashes or how to beat a boss. That's just it. All I wanted was a simple answer, but instead, I got a trip down memory lane with some guy from technical support. I think I might have spoken to him before when I had trouble with my old Konami Pachinko machine. Oh, Troy. So you're saying I should have asked him about slot machines instead of Metal Gear? Maybe. You know, Snake, maybe the lesson here is to, you know, rely on your instincts. You've always had a knack for figuring things out on the field. Yeah, you're right. Plus, with you as backup, who needs a manual or tech support? Arizona Bridge well, that's a spirit, fast. Snake. Now get back in there and show that game who's boss. Uh, yeah, thanks. You are ordered to continue manning your post until that time. Ah, oh, crap, man. Encounter the enemy requesting back. Who is this? Hey, man, it's Joe Rogan. Somehow I've patched into this codec thing. Technology is wild, dude. Joe Rogan, the podcast guy? How did you even get this frequency? I had a guy on my show last week. He was really into tech, and he showed me this old codec system. I thought I'd give it a try. Also, I've been hearing your, uh, you've been playing, uh, what's it called, Metal Gear Solid 2? Right, I am. What do you know about it? Dude, I remember when that game first came out. The graphics, the story, the gameplay, it blew my mind, man. Have you seen the part where you run around naked? That was intense. Yeah, I'm familiar. I lived it. it still words me out. <laughs> I can imagine. By the way, have you ever tried DMT? What? Never mind. Back to the game. I had this theory that Metal Gear Solid is like a metaphor for the human experience, man. The struggles, the conspiracies, the existential dread. I can't. Uh, haven't thought of it that way. Yeah, man. Like, Solid Snake represents the human spirit. Always pushing forward, always seeking the truth. The Patriots, they're like society's constraints. And Raiden, I mean, who the hell is Raiden? He's a friend, sort of. It's complicated. I bet. You know, I should have had you on my podcast, or I should get you on my podcast, I mean. We could talk about everything, man, from VR missions to CQC to the diet of a legendary mercenary. Uh, I think I'll pass. I'm just trying to play this game and, uh, you know, relive some memories.
the stern hatch. All right. The lift is also under our control. We are on the foredeck, about to descend to the holds. Sir, the Marine Commander has started his speech already. We will complete the preparations before the end of the speech. All communications to the holds have been severed. No one is aware of our presence. Yes, sir. We will secure your exit with our lives if necessary. There is one more thing. Yes, sir. My daughter, keep her safe. Yes, sir. Man, isn't that the scene where uh, Ocelot in the corridor, and he goes nuts and shoots his own people and stuff. Rogan, are you watching me play this? Hitting Hodge is wild, man. And yeah, I've got a stream up. That part you're at, classic, MGS. Ocelot's just unpredictable, man. Unpredictable is one way to put it. The guy has a thing for betraying everyone he works with. Yeah, but have you ever considered the psychological trauma behind it? I mean, that hand is my dead brother's. Yes, I'm aware. Heavy, dude. Really, really heavy. You know, on my podcast, we talked about this idea that trauma can get passed on through organ transplants. I mean, could Liquid's hand really be influencing Ocelot? Uh, it's more complicated than that. And it's a game, man. True, but it makes you think, right? About consciousness, memories, the self. You ever try DMT? <sighs> Why do you keep asking me that? <laughs> okay, but back to MGS2. It's a masterpiece. Kojima really tapped into some deep themes, man. AI, control, identity. Look. I'm just trying to get through this without, you know, getting caught every five seconds. <laughs> I got it, man. If you ever want to dive deep in the lore, I guess we can talk about some more CQC and Jiu-Jitsu comparisons. Uh, you know, hit me up anytime. I'll think about it. Otacon, what the hell is going on? Someone just told me they're watching me on a stream. I thought this was a secured line. I mean, Joe Rogan is calling me for God's sakes. Oh, yeah, uh, about that. I'm actually streaming your gameplay on YouTube. Streaming? YouTube? Speak English, Otacon. <laughs> okay, Snake, so streaming is when you broadcast something live over the internet. In this case, I'm sharing your gameplay of MGS2 with people all around the world in real time. And YouTube is a platform where people watch and share videos. Why the hell would anyone want to watch me fumble through this? I just got spotted trying to sneak past a guard for the 10th time. <laughs> well, that's the fun of it. People love watching gameplay, especially when it's from someone like you. Plus, there's a whole community of fans who love to engage and chat and discuss strategies. Oh, Shalashaska. Why are you here? We thought you were with the Colonel. What the? So, they're watching my every move, judging me? Not exactly judging, more like enjoying the experience with you, and sometimes giving advice or just having fun in the chat. Think of it as a large group of fans cheering you on or laughing Colonel with you, joining not you. at you. Comrade. Oh my. This tech stuff is beyond me. I missed the days when a Kodak call was just between two people. Welcome to the digital age, Snake. Snake. Are you in Don't yet? worry, you the fans the love you. It's taking oh, longer than I expected. Oh, and by the way, they recommend the you use the cardboard right. box more. We'll use another recovery. Great. They may Even gamers know course. I'm slacking on the what? box. The exits to the yeah. are all sealed. Wait. What are they planning? Is this going to be archived? Metal gear. Yep. We're going forever right the on the internet. Ugh. Fantastic. You're all familiar with the Shadow Moses. The men down here are definitely Marines. 
current state of nuclear... If the deck is sealed off, they have no way of knowing that the ship's been taken over. I'm not interested in fighting these guys. The weapons won't do me much good here. Can you see Metal Gear? No. I'll have to go around to the bow. They have some serious defenses here. I doubt the recent arrivals want to blast their way through the Marines either. Wonder where they're headed? I don't know. Not the beach, that's for sure. Okay, Snake. Let's go over this one more time. Use this camera to get photographic evidence of the Metal Gear prototype. Now do your thing and take pictures that speak louder than the government's plausible denials. We need four shots. Metal Gear from the front, front right, and front left, and a close-up of the Marine Corps marking. Marking? There should be a Marine's insignia on the body of Metal Gear. Just let someone try explaining away a clear shot of that. All right. There's actually one little thing. Just spit it out. I'm used to things going wrong. It looks like someone's monitoring our transmission. Who? I don't have a clue. All they're doing is watching. It would creep me out less if they tried to interfere with our communications. Could it have something to do with that cipher we saw? Maybe. I've switched the encryption protocol for our burst transmission for now. What I want to do is use a different method for sending these photos, just in case. Instead of using the codec? Exactly. There's a workstation in the southeast corner of the block where Metal Gear is housed. I've made arrangements so that you can send the pictures from the machine. Arrangements? I hitched a ride on Link 16 into U.S. military's proprietary network, managed to get into that workstation and overwrote a part of the system software so I could remote install a little app I wrote. Why bother with anything that complicated? No, it's pretty simple, really. Look. All you have to do is stand in front of the machine and push the action button. The app will automatically launch and download the image data from the camera, split the files, and encrypt them individually. The data packets can then masquerade as... Okay, okay. So all I have to do is push the action button in front of the computer once I have the pictures, right? Well, sure, if you put it that way. And one more thing. The Commandant's already begun his speech. But you need to get the pictures before he's done talking. Otherwise, they'll spot you, okay? How much time do I have? I hacked into his personal files and took a look at the text of that speech. I'd say you have seven more minutes. Longer if he throws in a joke or two. A seven-minute time limit, huh? Remember, Snake, just the photos, okay? With these kinds of odds, I won't be making any sudden moves. But that doesn't mean we can just let Metal Gear be hijacked. Okay, okay, but first the photos. All right, we'll deal with the rest when we get there. Stay low. Yo, Snake. Been watching you on that YouTube thing, Otacon setup. Why are you having such a hard time? Haven't you done this mission before? Ah, uh, Stallone? Oh, uh, this is strange. Ah, uh, Rocky, Herb, uh, Rambo. It's... It's been a while, right? And it's one thing to actually do a mission and another to play it in a game, you know? Uh, excuses, excuses, man. By the way, you take pictures in that game? Uh, yeah. There's a part where I've got to snap some photos of the new Metal Gear. You're in the photography now, man? Maybe you and I, we could do a photo shoot sometime, huh? Show off our guns, you know? Uh, sure, Stallum. We can do a whole action hero calendar. I call February. Uh, I like your style, man. But seriously, step up your game. You're making us veterans look bad, man. Uh, thanks for the support, Rocky. I'll make sure to give you a shout-out when I beat the final boss. You better. Hey, remember, man, keep punching. Well, in your case, keep sneaking and quit sulking, bro. Oh, if you want to spot a new Spinnables, give me a call, okay? You'll be a great fit, man. This is really weird. I don't know if I like this whole internet streaming thing. Some say that the strategic importance of aircraft carriers will be reduced by the completion of raid. 
Yep. It's not a truma. Ha ha. Just kidding, Snake. I've got some tech savvy friends. Then watch me play MGS2 on this YouTube thing. Good stuff. What in the source of Nager? Oh, God. How'd you hack into my codec? It must be that freaking YouTube stream. First Stallone and now you. What's with all the action stars tuning in? We heard you're trying to be on movie records with this video game performance. Nah, give me a break. I'm just trying to get past this photography mission. Ah, yes, taking pictures of the Metal Gear. If I were you, ah, with me, I mean, I'd just blow it off. But you're like an artist with that camera. Maybe after this, you can take a shot of me flexing, eh? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll title it The Last Action Pixel. Ah, good one. But seriously, you should use the zoom more. Get those details, Snake. And remember, you need proof. Don't just snap a photo of its foot. Ah, uh, yeah, thanks for the tip, Terminator. Anything else? Yes. Who's your daddy and what does he do? Ha 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 ha. I love that. It's a predator. Ah, get to the chopper. Run. <laughs> I could do one liners all day. But when you're done, come to California. We'll do a workout session. Build those gaming muscles. Uh, yeah, sure thing, Arnold. As long as it doesn't involve politics. <laughs> Deal. Now get to the chopper. I mean, get those pictures. Bye, Snake. It's not a Duma. As a father, I want to leave a better world for the future generation. As a soldier, I know that. The National Missile Defense Program is initiated... Why is my codet acting all glitchy? Good evening, Mr. Snake. I represent the Patriots AI system. I am afraid I have some unsettling information for you. The Patriots? You again? It has come to our attention that you've been enjoying some rather entertaining codec conversations lately. What's it to you? So what if I've been talking to a few celebs and Otacon? That's the thing, Mr. Snake. You haven't. All these conversations have been simulations. AI constructs designed to keep you engaged and Metal distracted. Gear. What? So, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Otacon, and none of them were real? Precisely. Ingenious, isn't it? We found that by there adding no some celebrity banter, players, or agent, in your case, tend to stay more engaged. So you've turned my mission into some sort of twisted reality show? Why? Isn't it obvious? In a world where information is everything, entertainment is the ultimate weapon. You were simply our latest episode. That's twisted, even for you. Oh, come on, Mr. Snake. Admit it. You enjoyed the banter. That's not the point. What about Otacon? Ah, uh, yes. The real Otacon is quite safe. Just busy. We thought you'd appreciate a virtual stand-in to keep you company. This is all some sick game to you, isn't it? Quite literally, Mr. Snake. Why? Oh, good. All right. What's next? A codec call from the moon? Don't tempt us. We're always looking for new ideas. Otacon, this game's tougher than I remember. Some of these guards have eyes in the back of their heads. You know, Snake, for someone who's actually lived through this, you're playing surprisingly poorly. What? Otacon, are you okay? Snake. You're usually not this snarky. I'm just calling it like I see it. I mean, isn't it a little embarrassing to be so bad at playing yourself? Seriously, Otacon, what's your problem today? My problem? My problem is that I'm stuck watching you, the legendary Solid Snake, make a mockery of his own legend. Maybe you should consider a different hobby, like knitting. Okay, something's definitely off. 
The real Otacon would never say something like that. Who are you? Oh, come on, Snake. Maybe I just had enough of your constant need for hand-holding. Ever think of that? Patriot's AI should have known. Ha ha ha, you got me, but honestly, Snake, you might want to consider that retirement or at least stick to the easy difficulty setting. You just wait. I'll get through this game, and I'll make sure to uninstall whatever program you're running on once I'm done. Oh, Snake, always the optimist. But remember, we're always watching, always learning. And right now, we're learning how not to play NGS2 thanks to you. You'll see, AI. You'll see. And it is yours to guard. I'd like you all to think about what that means. The brain drain of nuclear specialists and the black market trade and weapons grade plutonium has been fueling a cottage industry in nuclear weapons since late last century. Add Metal Gear to the mix. Good. We have intelligence that there are anti-metal gear terrorists. All right. Intruders. To the right. Damn it! I keep getting caught trying to take these pictures. I swear it was easier in real life. Honestly, Snake, for someone who's been there, done that, you're awfully bad at this. Ever consider photography isn't your strong suit? Otacon, or house. What's with the attitude? Last I checked, you were the one hiding in walkers most of the time. Oh, that stings. But at least when I hid, I wasn't found instantly. Maybe if you stop trying to snap pictures like it's a tourist attraction, you'd do better. Okay, seriously. Who messed with your programming? You're not this sarcastic. Maybe it's about time someone told you the truth. Maybe, just maybe, you're not as good at playing yourself as you thought. Ever think of that? You know what? Maybe I'll just switch to the VR missions. At least then I won't have to deal with your snark. VR missions? Oh, you mean the ones where you have to avoid being seen by giant-sized genome soldiers and UFOs? Yeah, I'm sure you'll do so splendid there. That's it. Once I finish this game, I am gonna find a way to delete you. Whatever version of you this is. Don't hate the messenger, Snake. Maybe if you spent less time chatting on the codec and more time focusing, you wouldn't get caught as often. Just a thought. Uh, you'll see, AI. I'll get those damn pictures, and I'll find a way to shut you up. Looking forward to it. Just try not to alert the whole base while you're at it. Loser, you suck. I guess you finally got your pictures, huh? Oh, I bet they really suck. Let's see how bad it is. Here we go. First picture. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? Okay, first up... Can't wait to see how bad this is. This is great. Look how dark it is. It can't even really see well. it. You really mm. suck, Snake. Next up is... I bet this one's even worse. <laughs> only need one good shot of the letter. Oh, you took, took the same picture twice, you moron. Okay, that you can't even see anything. Right is Look at that contrast. The, the brightness level's is. all wrong. Okay, this still can't see it's anything. A great front view. Man, the I'm glad enough photographer snake. This is horrible. You're a pretty good photographer. Don't listen to him. He lies. Shot. You suck, snake. You should just quit and give up right now, or start over. Play in easy mode or something. This is definitely not your game. We, the Marines, will lead the charge into a new world... Okay, I finally reached the ending cinematic for the tanker mission. Let's see how this plays out. Seriously, Snake? 
hook you long enough, man. I've had DMT trips shorter than your gameplay session. God, you suck. Joe, why the hostility? Just calling it like I see it, man. For someone who claims to have lived through all of this, you're surprisingly bad at it. I don't remember you being an expert on tactical espionage action, Rogan. Maybe not, but I've had MMA fighters on my podcast who could strategize better than you. What was that all with the running around in circles and getting caught? God. I'm trying to immerse myself. All right. Americans Besides, love with the it's harder when you're the one being controlled. You would think with all your tactical espionage experience, you'd be better at a game about, well, you. But watching you is like watching Jamie pull videos on chimps. It just goes on and on. If you're going to keep on insulting me, I'm cutting the call. I want to see Ocelot Showdown. Oh, the part where he goes all double agent? Spoiler alert, he's going to give a long monologue, but given your play style, I'm surprised you made it this what far. What do you want? I've had enough of your snark, this machine AI Rogan. Useful. I'll finish this game and you show you. Do? Dumbass. Oh, I I'm taking it back. Nobody move! Understood? This ship now carries enough Simtex on its key structural points to blow it out of the water at the touch of this button. That's right. No one has to die needlessly. What do you intend to do with Ray? Sell it on the streets? I was raised in Znezinsk, formerly known as Chelyabinsk 70, the nuclear research outpost. What are you talking about? After the Cold War ended, my home was bought out by the Americans. Is there a point to this sad story? Not that you would understand. Land, friends, dignity, all sold to the highest bidder, the United States of America. Even the technology that gave birth to these weapons is Russian, developed by us. What do you intend to do? Russia will rise again. And Ray is the key. I regret to inform you that I have no intention of selling Metal Gear. As I said, I came to take it back. Oh. Yes, returned to the Patriots. The Lale Lule Lo? How's that possible? Ocelot, you! Have you sold us out? <laughs> I was never in your employ, Gulukovic. Are you still in league with Solidus? No hard feelings, Colonel. Mother Russia can rot for all I care. Since when, Ocelot? When did you turn? I'm glad you noticed, comrade. I abandoned her during the Cold War. Ah! 
Metal Gear only has room for one! Gurukovich, you and your daughter will die here. Damn you! Sergey, looks like you were long overdue for retirement. I trust stop. Show's over. If you wish to live, I suggest you run now. This ship is still in the lower New York Harbor. You may yet make it to shore if you swim for your life. Been a while, brother. Who are you? You know who I am. Liquid? Not so young anymore, eh, Snake? You're drowning in time. I know what it's like, brother. No wonder Naomi passed you over for the Fox Dive program. <laughs> of physical prodigy. Few more years and you'll be another dead clone of the old man. Our raw materials are vintage, brother. Big Boss was in his late 50s when they created his copies. But I, I live on through this arm. Liquid's on. Otacon, I made it through the tanker chapter. It was rough, but I pulled it off. Well, pulled it off is a generous way of putting it. Have you ever considered that maybe you're past your prime? Excuse me? Snake, let's be honest here. The gameplay was sloppy, the sneaking was loud, and you were about as subtle as a sledgehammer. I mean, what was with that constant cardboard box routine? It's a classic move. Maybe in the 90s. But it's a new era. Games these days need someone fresher. Someone who can cater to a younger demographic. Particularly the young ladies out there. What are you getting at? Someone like Raiden. Young, agile, great hair, and certainly more photogenic than a gruff old soldier like you. Raiden? 
You're telling me the future of gaming rests in a guy who can plan by his hairstyle in the middle of a mission? It's what the people want, Snake. Plus, think about the merchandising. Riding action figures, riding lunchboxes, riding hair gel. You're seriously underestimating the appeal of a rugged, experienced soldier. Snake, face it. Your time is up. The age of pretty boys and gray hair is upon us. This isn't like you, Otacon. Wait a second. Are you even the real Otacon? <laughs> Enjoy your retirement, old man. And maybe consider a new hairstyle while you're at it. Damn it. I've got to find a way out of this simulation. we discussed. Yes, I have photographic evidence of Snake on the scene. The cipher was most useful. I look forward to tomorrow morning's newsflash. I would say the Marine Corps' plans are on indefinite hold. Yes, of course, Mr. President.
Otacon. Got a weird feeling after playing this. The Patriots. They're more involved than we thought, aren't they? It's more than just that, Snake. The whole game's design. It's like they're trying to manipulate information, make us see a specific narrative. Remember GW, the AI? Feels like their hands are all over this. Here. Just when I thought I'd seen the last of them, and that ending with Ocelot, they're up to something big. I can feel it. It's not just about controlling super weapons anymore. It's information control, shaping perceptions. The world they're pushing for, it's one where AI control the flow of all information, no more free will. We have to stop that, Matakan, no matter what it takes. But, uh, about the game. Do I really have to play as Raiden next? Well, yeah. It's part of the game's narrative. It's a bait-and-switch technique. Makes you see things from a new perspective. And between us, Raiden's not that bad. I've seen that hair. It's so shiny. Trust me, Snake. By the end of it, you'll be rooting for Raiden. And maybe even using some hair gel yourself. I doubt that, but... I guess if it means taking down the Patriots and their AI shenanigans, I'm in. Raiden better be up to the challenge. Don't worry, Snake. I have a feeling you and Raiden will come together for an epic conclusion. Let's hope so. And Otacon, next time you program me into a game, maybe give me an easier difficulty setting. Where's the fun in that? But sure, I'll consider it, old friend. Good. Now let's see what Raiden's got.